you say we outnumbered. We live by this and we die by this. We don't retreat. We don't run. Every man must search his own soul. That's why that Martin Luther King quote, that's why I say what it, like you don't judge a person by where they stand in times of comfort and convenience. You judge them by where they stand in times of challenge and controversy. And if you ain't work, like when you work for something, it gives you a different type of attachment to it. The harder you work, the harder it is to surrender. That's why cats can give up so easy. They ain't got nothing invested. They ain't work for it. They ain't sacrifice for it. Every time it get tough, they go blow weed. They ain't working for it. Right? They ain't got nothing sacrificed into it. But when a cat work for something, when a cat been sacrificed for something, well, you're going to have a cold day in hell before you take it from them. Because they value it different. Practice, you know, stadium, security, we got to pay for all of that. So I'm the arm of this. Can we talk about it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we need that. That's going to be it. We are one of 40 something students. In America, to have this kind of thing. That's a big deal. Only 40? Yes. So when people be saying they got under all they run. The team sport, we're undeniable. What does that mean? We are, they can't deny it. We are undeniable programs. That's less than 1%. Yes. Where this man be getting his research from? I thought he was the media. He got his own research. He got his own research. He's serious about that research. Oh, man, I've been writing this a long time, man. A long time. You better give me a long time. Oh, you want to wave him? You yeah. been on the worldwide tour, huh? Yeah. 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 Y
your fourth year as head coach? Yes, sir. Going into your fourth year. It ain't no secret. I mean, you went to the state championship in your first year. Then you went back to back. Your name is coming up for countless jobs. The kids are hearing it. The administration is hearing it. How have you been able to keep your kids um, stable-minded on, on the program and, and, and what you're trying to do with this program and not let all the rumors get to them? You know what? You know, I, I love... Bill Belichick, when he when he says ignore the noise, you gotta be able to ignore that noise. You gotta be able to have tunnel vision, you know. And when I'm very transparent with my guys, I'm very transparent with my administration and the inspired on network. So we have a great line of communication because it's not just about me. Like I said before, I could leave here tomorrow. This thing gonna keep rolling, you know, because the foundation is set, the tradition is set. You know, it's it's. It's harder to maintain something than to build something. Mm -hmm. So for us, our longevity has come has, has really been in existence because we're able to maintain it. But it's not maintaining it with with just superior athletes. It's maintaining it with you know superior coaching and coaches who have been together. I think the staff has been together now for like eleven years. So you know that's that's a part of it. That's a part of it. You know, so, you know, those job offers, they're going to come and, you know, the, the guys, they ask me about it, they talk about it, you know, and and we have meetings and discussions that, that you have seen before in our team meeting. And it's not really a, a monologue, it's a dialogue in our team meeting. Right. And we talk to each other. So, you know, we, I'm real transparent with it. And if that day come, it come and, and I got to stand there and I got to tell them and, and they got to sit there and they got to accept it. You know, whichever way it go, if I'm staying or if I'm going. But right now I'm here. So as, if I'm here, we're focused on one thing. That's that's part of our academic achievement and our athletic excellence. So if we got to blend those two, we have to. That's that's why you see these trophies right here. You, you see these trophies right here not because of just athletics. You see these trophies right here because they're student athletes. You know, it's not a day we go out of practice before we go to study hall first. So a lot of that, a lot of that makeup goes into, it. you know, a lot of things that Carr do might not be for another program. You know, what we do here is, is built for Carr. So, you know, to try to take that model and to bring it somewhere else, you know, is a whole different task because you got to know the, the, the tradition of Carr. It's just not me. You know, this is, this is 50 years of tradition here. You know, for me, I could be here today, gone tomorrow, cost still gonna be here. So I think, you know, any coach that leaves here and go coach it somewhere else, you know, some things is necessary to do the things we do here, but not all things are mandatory to do it. You think, I think just having your own identity, finding yourself, because we gonna be us at the end of the day. We, we gonna prepare and we gonna work hard and we gonna have fun doing it. So, you know, that might not be the motto of every program. You know what, I think uh, it's just timing, and I know, you know, everybody will say the timing will never be right, but I could, I could tell you this, and this kind of person I am, you know, every day when you wake up and you got to make a decision, you got to understand that half of the room going to like it, and half of the room going to dislike it. So I've learned to ignore the likes and the dislikes and do what's best for me. Uh, and the boys, and the, the coaching staff, and the trainers, and the, the strength staff, and the, you know everybody. You know everybody. It's, it's, it's harder when you when you're over hundreds of people, right? Than, instead of just being over yourself. So I think you got to take an account of all of that stuff. I think you know when the timing is right. You know we'll we'll cross that bridge. And get it. Let's go!
Back up. Every team have a different identity. Every team have a different approach. Every team got different kids. Every team got different mentalities. It's everything. We can't coach this year's team like we coached last year. And I was talking to Coach Mike and Coach O in the text message last night. And I sent them a thorough message on what how we should expect to coach here at college. Now, am I telling you how to coach? No. I'm just telling you the expectation of how to do it. And listen, that has nothing to do with my game. Do you want your player to play for you? Or do you want that player to compete for you? Who can explain to me the difference between the two? Who won't go for a whack ass? The difference between playing and competing for you, the, the coach. Coach Jay, is there? No, I'm not going to The difference between playing and competing, uh, a player playing for you is just somebody who's out there just playing, doing it for because they're playing, doing it first. And to me, that's competing, that's doing it day online, doing it for the group. Doing it for themselves, doing it for us, but we talk about it pride. I think a player playing for you is somebody that's going through the motions, somebody that's more like a robot, just doing what the team asks them to do every day, doing the same thing every day. A competitor for your coach is somebody who kind of, to me, takes on the personality of that coach and knows how to compete every day, day in and day out, on and off the field and everything that you do. But to me, that has to be taught from the coach to the player to take on that personality. The team got to be built on competitors. Not playing for you, but playing through you. They have to play through you, knowing that the battle is not against an opponent, but the battle is against you. Picked up because, and I'm not saying you should coach like Chris or B. All of these are numb. All of these people have their own individual style, but that's what we preach to our kids, right? Is to have individuality and be yourself. So I'm telling you right now, listen, if you seeking to please me, it ain't gonna happen. Don't try to please me. <coughs> be your own individual coach. And I know a lot of y'all, the, 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 the vet guys, y'all are young and hear this shit so many times, you're tired of hearing it. But you know, for the newer people and the people that's coming along through this program, right, that's the only reason why we winning. It's the style of coaching, the brand of coaching, the quality of coaching. I just stuff out of team meeting just now. I told them. Just like we talked about in our first staff meeting a week ago. If this team play hard, play small, play together, they're going to win. Let's go. That's not your decision. That's not your choice. That's their choice. That's their choice in that. How they compete through you. How they compete for you. Through you. Yeah, you want to keep putting them down rings on your finger? You, got, you think that's just going to come easy? You got enough rings? Three and up? You done? Don't come easy. That should come with hard work. Hard work, dedication, determination, pride. That's the same thing we've been talking about to our kids. I'm not going to keep meeting and saying the same thing. It's going to be with expectation and you doing your job. Because we asking, all no, asking that in the squeeze on the down block, right? That's what you're asking, right, Coach? Yep. Yeah. B telling his linebacker straight forward over the top, cloud of the cliff. Both Nick and B, that's what they're telling him, right? Nick telling his running back, if they doing that, just you better jump cut outside, you better get skinny in the hole. That's what he doing. Chris D telling him you better combo that block. Mike and O talking about you better block this damn apex rover. And seal this corner. Coach Jared talking about you better shed this block. All of them. The process in that one play. The process in that one play. Where somebody is not going to do their job determines if that play is successful or unsuccessful. 
your attendance and your diligence and your hard work could either turn into success or what? Practice what you preach. You need a whole thing, you better tell me. We'll keep going. Close mouth, don't get fed. We'll keep going. Oh, no, no. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Restart that period. That's why you got that on your finger. Don't lose sight of that. Don't lose your vision of that. Me? As far as my team expectations, I feel like not getting complacent. You know, a lot of them got two rings, so we just got to just keep pushing that, like, that season over. Like Coach Bryce was saying, like, it's a new team, new identity. We That, that, that ring last year is over. It's over. So with this team, like, we can't let them get comfortable. So that's mainly my, my team expectation, not even thinking about that last year ring. But like, always keeping that, that the future in your vision. Like, we, 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 like last year over, what are we gonna do this year? And what what our group, a lot of them played last year, but a lot of them wasn't starters. So we trying to create that that, that confidence right now, that, that mindset. Like I can't wait on nobody else to make the play. I gotta go make that play now. I ain't gonna be no. I'm not a rotator now. I'm a starter now. So the expectation for our group, mainly with you know those three guys like we talked about, the Lyle, Ellsworth, even Aaron right now, like they. They got to compete on a consistent basis, so when that ball come around, it's gonna come natural. It's gonna, it's just gonna, it's gonna click. And when, as far as Dylan and even Bevro, they going through that that process that we always talk about, like that starting from the you know from scratch, playing D line. You can tell they started playing with their hand in the dirt. They ain't used to playing that space. So I'm just trying to create, like I said, that confidence of them when they get in space. I'm gonna make this play. I'm gonna read my keys. And I'm gonna make this play in space on anybody I got in space, period. And if we if we if we able to make them plays in space, I think we're gonna we're gonna be a dominating defense and get goose eggs throughout the whole year. That's how that's how we talk. My expectations for the team are, you know, I'm coming from a school where there was no expectation. Kids then kids were just playing because their mama wanted them to play things like that, so coming back home, my expectations are the team has to become one more. It's a lot of division. And once we become one body, I believe that we'll see what it is that Card is used to seeing. I like this team because I, you know, for y'all, I know y'all, you know, all y'all, y'all, y'all want that ring. But for me, it's, it's a little bit more. I like building. I love seeing that. I love seeing a player like Kevin Marinick, um figure it out. Figure it out by finding themselves. But I also like watching you help them figure it out. That's your job. They already have a tough enough task dealing with me on a daily basis. Sometimes you got to be their support system. And a lot of y'all y'all play for me, uh, Wayne, Ronnie, y'all already know. And you gotta owe, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta help them. You gotta help them. Because if 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 you beat them down, I'm beating them down, T beat them down, Dylan I'm beating them down, and special teams me. Shit. You gonna beat a dead horse, huh? Somebody gotta build them back up. Somebody got to give them the cheat sheet. Somebody got to give them the answers. Because if you're not cheating, you're not trying. You got to figure it out. And look, if they want to figure it out, I'm still going to turn them away. I'm still going to attack, attack, attack. Because I want to see the perseverance. I want to see it. I want to see that player come and look at me and say, Coach, I got it. I got it. But not only just say it, believe it. That's 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 the mantra of playing that call. That's that's what it's all about. That you believe in yourself and you believe in the people around you. We have to keep instilling that in them. But we gotta figure this shit out. <laughs> A lot of y'all know how to deal with me. You just ignore the shit and you just keep walking. But I'm gonna keep coming. I'm gonna keep coming because I want you to understand. But I understand that you hear me. 
understand that you're injured. Because I want you, just like I want the players, to want better for yourself. All y'all have the ability to be old offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators in here. Want better for yourself. Want more for yourself. I'm not going to stop you. Want my job. We talked about last year about consistency is one of the hardest things for a man to achieve is to be consistent. I think you have done real consistent throughout your careers here, coaching here. That's why we're so successful. It's not because of me. It's really because of you. It's because of you just coming here every day and wanting better for your kids and giving them 100% and you giving yourself 100%. If that makes sense to you, you give yourself 100%. Because you, you don't want to be the weak link. Your consistency, being parents, being husbands, being coaches, being teachers, all of that is making us a better staff. I was so excited to see that you really took heed to the text message about the banquet on Saturday about bringing your kids and having them be a part of it. Because it gives it gives them the sense that just because my daddy is a coach don't mean that I can't be a part of his life. Because he's a part of a hundred people's lives every day. That's what a lot of your kids missing in that room. And you have filled that boy being a father. But you have your own kids that run around at practice. Stealing the damn snacks and shit. That's what they're supposed to do. That should make you feel exceptional. That should make you feel exceptional that you could balance the two between being a hardworking father in both worlds to your player and to your child. That's what coaching that call about. You know, I really wanted to tell you that in private. Um, really appreciate that. Because it, it makes me feel like you're understanding and you're listening to what's being preached and what's being what's been taught to us. That family come first. Uh, I've, been, I've been going to Atlanta Car Games since sixth grade. You know, I started rock for the first time. I wanted to be a part of that. I saw how they played, I've been watching a lot of Ellis. I wanted to be him. Right. So I'm like, the best way to get close to that is to come to the school and be mental. When my brother went here two years before me, you know, he kind of pushed me toward this. It seemed like in the car has gotten on a national scale. I mean, everybody knows about in the car. I mean, I got family members in Texas, California, Georgia. They know about in the car. So you already know how the city feels about in the car. Just talk about that target. That's on y'all back every Friday night and hire everybody gunning for y'all. I mean, ever since y'all leave, the first time y'all still in these doors. Todd will be there. Because who we have, we got everybody on. So it's every time coaches come here and they preach like we have that on our back. But we ain't competing with nobody but ourselves. See, in this program, we more focus about ourselves. Most programs you go to, they move focus about us. Right. And that's why they go on there. That. That's why every day when we come out here, we preach about family and preach about brotherhood. Because every day we compete with each other and with ourselves, not with nobody else. So that talk will come. That's, that's part of the game. Right. That, especially after one that we got, right. it will come. Because right. everybody, like I said, won't what we have. Target, target, like he said, the target been, the target, you know, this gonna be on our back because of teams that play here, the recent teams, the recent players that play here, how they been beating people so bad, so, you know, they gonna always want that revenge on us, but the target is, you know, phase us, you know, phase us, because we know what we gotta do to get to where we need to be, and that's state championship, you see, you win a state championship, or your bus. Now, I mean, growing up, I knew what pride meant. I mean, I've seen pride on shirts. I've seen pride in different slogans or different schools. But I was telling somebody this <clears throat> a few months ago that I thought I knew what pride meant until I started affiliating myself with in the car and coming around and seeing the players and the coaches and how y'all interact with each other. 
man, kind of give everybody an insight about what pride is over here at the car. Pride here at the car is, is, is never quit. No matter how, how tough things get, because things can get real tough at the car. You know, you never quit. You know, you got to be mentally tough, physically tough. You got to have it in your mind every day to finish the day out strong and be better than you were the recent day. That's what pride is. Pride, if you look around this book, big room, and you see these quotes and these signs, it tells you everything you need to know. Otherwise, you got to end. Pride is, is, is coming out of work. Like, if you look over there, it says, no excuses, just results. Like, we live by that. That's pride right now. Like, it's a fight. We gotta, we gotta stick together. Like I said, it's family. And, you know, this one, that was pride. Now, now, everybody that, that come to the game on Friday night, they see Cody Bryce. Um, you, you rarely see him smile. Um, you rarely see him kind of even hug anybody. You really see him kind of interact with people. Um, and a lot of people think that Coach Bryce is a hard-nosed person, is that's tough to get along with, hard to play for. Um, what y'all think of Coach Bryce and how he's prepared y'all since y'all been to have a cup? Um, since I got a cup, I was one of the bad kids, right? <laughs> I put up the team a lot. But one thing I can say about Coach Bryce, he, he ain't gonna let you give up. Like, people look at him as a mean, like, don't care guy, but do love, Coach Bryce love everybody on the mat, he the same. He treat everybody the same. If, if you go out there and do what he has, if you go out there and do what he said, and do it right, he will respect you. Because Coach Bryce was the man that taught me how to be a young man, who got me to where I am today. Because me growing up, I grew up with all women. Right. I was the only boy in the house. So when I got the cub, when I was quitting, he taught me how to lose that, like stop quitting. He taught me how to be a young man. He, te he taught me how to be a young leader and help others when they grew up. So being, a, being around Coach Bryce like a father figure for me. Right? I look at him as my pops. Y'all had over 110 kids that have signed scholarships in the last 10 years. Like that's mind boggling. What y'all credit that to? Look, let me tell you. These coaches, when they come in here, they what they preach to us about. Uh, we had car, we were up our car. Scholarships and all that, that will come. But if you focus on that, it's not going to come. While you in this program, that's what, that's what your focus is supposed to be. Everything was locking on that, on, on, in the car program. All that other stuff, like scouts and all that, they will come later in the long run. But you gotta put in your work in here before you even step on anybody's campus. I credit that stat off of how hard the coaches push you and how hard you work. Because you're not gonna see a player that that doesn't come to practice, you're not gonna see him go to D1. It depends on how hard you come in away from work, how hard you be on that field of work. You know, all the technique that your players or that your coaches give you, it depends on how you use it, your game film. Y'all come here on Sundays while the Saints playing for eight hours. I mean, well, you know, he'll work around the Saints game, you know, but it just depends on how the week went. It just depends on if we did our job throughout the week. Come Sunday, he might let us watch the Saints game. Or if we didn't do what we're supposed to do, if you got, you know, little things that are happening, he's going to nip it in the butt before it becomes big. And, and, and that's the beauty of having a leader like that. And so, yeah, well, sometimes we're here at eight hours. Sometimes we're here six hours. You know, it just, it's just whatever the job calls for, whatever has to be cleaned up, whatever has to be prepared for. Um, he's a guy that's going to prepare every day. And right now, we just want to win the sprint. We just want to win every day. So it's not really on. We're not talking three P. You won't hear that around here. You won't hear us say those kind of things. It's about winning today. Stop looking forward and 
we, we have a lot of short-term goals within the next two weeks that we want to accomplish a part of the process. And if we accomplish those things and we're on the right course, if we don't, then we've taken a step backwards. And like we just talked about in the previous segment, then we'll have a coach meeting and he'll, he'll get that in the butt very quickly. <laughs> Right now, my focus is on fundamentals. My focus is on uh, my group being accountable. My focus is on uh, special teams doing what they're supposed to do and us uh, gearing up in phases. And it's all about the process. You know, a lot of people don't like to say the process, and then you got a lot of people talking about the process. If you really understand the process, then you understand the little things it takes. It's just like setting short term goals for a long term goal. We would love the three people, don't get me wrong. We can't want it more than the kids. And I think a lot of kids get in their ring, those, those freshmen, sophomores, and juniors that did get a ring this past Saturday, a lot of them talked about that, like, this is not our ring. This is, you know, this is the seniors' ring. This is uh, TC's ring, and Jameer's, and Spurlock, and Skyler, you know, they're seniors. They will, they're, those are the guys that will be remembered. You know, the Ronnie Jacksons, the Mods, the Devin Bushes, their focus is already on the next task. 